<laughs> Are you widely awake? No. <laughs> <laughs> In the West, they need a heavy dose of coffee to wake up. In Hong Kong, in China, what do we have? Uh, Chinese tea. <laughs> coffee and tea, yeah, yin yang. <laughs> now, this morning, we have a very uh, highly abundant uh, feast for you. Okay? We have three parts. The second part will be by Professor Lauren Fister from Switzerland. <laughs> he will share with us, going beyond what Mike Brannard has told us, that the stuff is stuff moral, and he will say the stuff is a system. Uh, has energy in itself, it's a process, it's not just a thing, stasis, it's moving, it's dynamic, it's growing, it has its own logic, and it's going to encroach you like an animal, okay? So he will become, he's strong, right? Uh, see? And then the third session, we have Professor John Wyatt uh, from the uh, Faraday Institute, and then we'll be seeing him, <laughs> we'll be seeing him through technology. <laughs> we'll be having a, a group Skype uh, discussion with him. And by the way, uh, uh, Brian, I think John White would like to see us even now. Oh, he is seeing us now? No? I see how he mailed Mike uh -huh. yesterday. Uh -huh. He would like to start getting connected at 10.30. 10.30, okay. With him now. Okay. He's not okay, very good, very good. <laughs> okay. The third session will be hosted by Dr. Von Mack, uh, the academic head of Lumina College. And then the second session will be hosted by Dr. Peter Eng, uh, the uh, head of our research institute, which is hosting today. Actually, today is the Hong Kong U yes. Faith and Science Collaborative Research Forum. Yes. Right? <laughs> Long name. <laughs> and the Lumina College Research Institute Collaboration. Mm -hmm. That's why we are here. Shall we have a word of prayer before we start? <coughs> Dear Lord, we thank you for giving us your beautiful creation. And you mandated us to take care of the land, to garden the, 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 the Eden, garden of Eden. And eventually we will make the city of Jerusalem through your grace and your intervention. But in the meantime, we are searching. And in modern day, we are so much influenced and affected and, and uh, encroached by technology. Give us a sense of distancing, sense of reflection, sense of learning together that we may eventually share with the church at large that what is this thing, technology, and what is it supposed to affect us, and how could we redirect to be more free, uh, human, and dignity. In the name of Christ Jesus, we pray. Amen. For the first part, I'm going to uh, respond to some of your comments last time, as requested by Mike. And the fourth session today will be Mike again giving you assignments for next time. <laughs> He's good at that, right? <laughs> he gives us all the assignments every day. The first, the first part will be a summary of what we have last time. And then I will respond a little bit more on the uh, uh, Ivan, Ivan Illich, Ivan Illich uh, tools for conviviality, which you are very much interested in. Okay? And I know that some of you are still not convinced that technology is neutral. Uh, it's not neutral. It's not neutral. Some of you are not convinced. It's, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. All right? So maybe after five times, then we can talk again. <laughs> we have five in the series. Okay? So after that, then I'll propose a deep structure approach to redeeming technology, a process, how to redeem technology. <laughs> uh, it's a bold attempt, okay? <laughs> uh, uh, with the understanding all your wise men, and I know that uh, our brother here is going to preach on Sunday on the three wise men visiting Jesus. <laughs> okay, that's good. <laughs> Group. <laughs> yes, okay, very good. So, are you ready? Okay, let's start. Deepening. Now, 
last time we share a little bit about form and consciousness the medium is the message the form is at the same time the content it's not so much technology is a carrier of message technology itself could be the message and also it will affect our consciousness for example writing writing will be a linear linear logical you know except for James Joyce and other you know <laughs> stream of consciousness it will be on a space spatial on a paper spatial spatially biased and then we have the uh, story of Plato right writing does it enhance memory or we have, we have the loss of memory eventually okay uh, and then synchronous sound when you have synchronous sound in film uh, then we may be in deep trouble in 1927 because sound and recording is so so sensitive then the actor and actress has to be immobile and you know, they cannot move around that much to get the sing sound recording and film aesthetics retarded uh, after the invention of new technology can you believe that and same for photoshop and and it wrapped it robbed our sense of awe in future photography when you see a beautiful picture you have no sensitivity at all in the future because you think it may be photoshop <laughs> And look at the beautiful picture of your wife. Right? <laughs> so in France, they do legislate that every advertisement in the future you have to label whether this picture is photoshopped legally. Okay. So anyway, calculators and so on. All right. And then, is technology a tool, and how come it becomes a a monster? It depends on the scale. All right. So so in Lawrence's paper that you are supposed to have read. Uh, a philosophy of technology mentioned a little bit about that and also Louis Mumford and also the uh, Ivan Illich the minimum use of technology the optimum use of technology and the massive use of technology and the massive manufacturing of technology they have different characters and different social effects and look for efficiency and then dictate our lives and addiction and then you know uh, do you have any life without technology? Uh, talking about everyone on the mass transit, everybody looking at the smartphone. Right? Uh, can we have no electricity for one month? Uh, no smartphone. Uh, anyway, so, so further consideration here. And then in the logic, Chakalu mentioned there is a la technique. Look for efficiency, excellence. Uh, look for uh, effectiveness. Look for uh, uh, just like the, the chancellor of Chinese University in Hong Kong, Sam Zhou Yu, mentioned that our best student is trying to use minimum effort, get the highest grade, <laughs> efficient and effective. <laughs> that is our best student. Uh, what happened to our worst students? <laughs> Today's world is like this machine culture, right? Anyway. So habitat, humiliation of the word, a visual habitat. Everything is visual. The logic, look for efficiency, effectiveness, systemization, institutionalization, minimum human engagement. You know, 2001 Space Odyssey. You kill all the crew members. Otherwise, they will tamper with the importance of the, of the voyage. <laughs> human can err, right? Machine cannot. <laughs> so we begin to augment to machine and then marginalize and annihilate it. Could you believe that? Terminator 2. <laughs> okay? And then, what can be done? Should it be done? Huh? Okay? Is science and progress huh? getting better? Development, is it an assumption that cannot be questioned? Is it better, larger, faster, efficient? Is it uh, 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 a priori? mandate okay uh, bow weapons guinea pigs can we study human as human and then we have john wyatt's discussion human dignity what what become human can we use human as a subject can we upgrade humanity can we design better human than god you know can you have the brave new world all right and god is uh, uh, enabling us to be part of the co-creation uh, so we can play lego with god and then we can re re-engineer humanity right 
and they bring in some transgenic, you know, we have the, uh, the wings of eagles and the eyes of well, whatever, okay? So that is something that we have to discuss. Transgenic, eugenic, you know, human cloning, gene splicing. Uh, where do we draw the line, All right? And then we'll have John Wise uh, reading that you're supposed to have read post-human dignity, post-human dignity, right? Gender, uh, concord, male, male technology, excellence, very noisy. And then it was a big failure, the French, you know, supersonic, hyper-supersonic, right? So female, today technology firms hire more female. They may be more communal, dialogic, you know, uh, more sensitive to family, and how about cooking, gardening, and home technology? Uh, not much advancement for so many years uh, as compared with other kind of technology. And by the way, uh, this morning's paper, uh, there was a leakage of the, one of the candidates of the uh, Hong Kong U uh, president. He's also an engineer. You, know? mm -hmm. you look at that. All the major higher education institutions in Hong Kong, primarily engineers, scientists. You know? That's interesting. Huh? That is interesting. Huh? What happened to the humanities? Because you cannot publish paper that fast, you see? <laughs> so you have lower ranking with the humanities. So you see the technological bias of our higher education, you know? Uh, you like that? Huh? <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> you have no lunch. <laughs> anyway, so, so that is male uh, bias. Oh, now we come to the second part of my uh, summary. And uh, you want to know more about the uh, ideas of Ivan. I learned it from uh, my teacher called Ivan Illich. But anyway, you may call it Ivan Illich. It's fine. <laughs> he said, society can be destroyed when further growth of mass production renders them, how do you say this word? Huh? Milieu. Milieu. Hostile when it extinguishes the free use of the natural abilities of society's member, you know, we no longer have a, make use of our natural ability, okay? Very hostile menu, when it isolates people from each other and locks them into a man-made shell, like a classroom. Sorry about today, we have a classroom, okay? <laughs> man-made shell, offices. When it undermines the texture of community by promoting extreme social polarization, and splintering specialization. All oh, they specialize. Uh, no. You are not sick until I, the doctor, say you are sick. Huh? And you cannot have medical care. Your uncles and aunties and mothers. You know, only nurses, qualified, and doctors can have medical care. Okay? So everything is so professionalized. All the common people are actual from all kinds of activities. Uh, you see, we try to legitimize it in the name of professionalization. Huh? Or when cancerous acceleration enforces social change at a rate that rules out any legal, cultural, political precedence as formal guidelines to prevent behavior, blah, blah, blah. That's what Louis Mumford also echoed. Is there any civilization anymore when technology is so dominating in our future world? Can we have genuine civilization as such? Okay, so that is Ivan Illich. Convivial tools. Mass production leads to specialization of functions, institutionalization of values, and centralization of power, and turns people into accessories of bureaucracies and machines. Uh, and go to see the movie Brazil, uh, Metropolis, <laughs> and her. Uh, remember the her. Uh, you have an operating system in female voice, almost like a girlfriend. You understand your daily needs all the time until one day when you woke up. She is talking to 6,000 people at the same time. <laughs> what a sad fact. <laughs> two watersheds. Now, this is his main, his main idea, two watersheds. Around 1913, uh, uh, the first wave is that modern technology enables better living, medical, medicine for health, immunity. So, so technology does help, did help humanities around 1913 onwards. But in the year around 1955, when you have immersive, massive, uh, never stop driven technology on a large scale, 
then we have trouble. Excessive use of technology enslave humans into the function of machines, excluding uh, them from professional or non-professional, uh, uh, excluding as non-professionals from medical care, education, and politics. And cars no longer effective as mass transportation. I just came from Manila. Uh, way to go to Bangkok. Can you drive through the city? Uh, Beijing, can you drive through the city? Yes, yes. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Los Angeles is the nickname, right? The largest parking lot in the world. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> so, so here is prophetic. In search of convivial tools. What is convivial tool? What is conviviality? That enlarges the range of each person's competence, control, and initiative, limited only by other individuals' claim to equal range of power and freedom. That we as human, to be abundant life, right, to be fully human, that is convivial tools. Beyond that limit, machine and slave and replace them replaces slaves. Education fits people into machine-made environment and ward and in prison. I have taught high schools. Students will raise up your hand. Sir, the thing that you are saying, is it included in the syllabus? If it's not, they are not going to listen to you. Crazy. <laughs> and ask a young MBA graduates, you know how to make a decision? They have to look up a book. Okay, decision tree, seven steps. <laughs> Boy. Triadic relationship between persons, tools, and new collectivity. Collectivity is the main word. That we tend to see things individually, but collectivity have a different a life of its own. Okay? Convivial is for celebration, participation, community, and freedom, and humanity. Right? I have a friend, John Kuna, in Illinois, Trinity International University. He has a center of bioethics and human dignity. Bioethics and human dignity. That's why we are sharing here. So it's all in your, in your, in your, in your handout. You, know, you have all this, all right? And then four solutions. Okay. When you read John Nisbet, uh, future trend, the future trend guy, Patricia and, and John Nisbet in the mega trends and all that, he always used technological solutions to modern problems. He said the future will be solved by technology, you know? <laughs> So the cure of management problem is through more management. <laughs> the specialized research, oh, we have interdisciplinary research, you know. <laughs> cure of education by expanding the curriculum. We have more. <laughs> Started when you, and then I raised up my hand when I was, was uh, one of the parents of, you know, we have the uh, Ginga Zhang, you know, to see the doctor of my children, all right? I asked him, will students learn less when they are taught more, you know? <laughs> All the parents look at me angrily. What is this guy talking about? How can you learn less huh, by teaching more? <laughs> anyway, so that is what Ivan Illich is trying to say. The real solution is to invent a deep structure of tools to guarantee people their right to work with high independence, independence and effectiveness. How can you help them to have projects in the independent thinking, reflection, and need tools to work, than tools that work for them. People are not consumer by nature, but creator. We are made in the image of God. We are not supposed to be consume, consume. What consume is that you are passive. You buy things. When we were young, every toy is self-made. We have to make our own toys to play. <laughs> and today, oh, my grandchildren, you know, they, when they have lunch, Boy, huh? what is the best babysitting machine? <laughs> uh, the smartphone is terrible. You know? I would like to open a glass, uh, a spectacle shop. You know? Must make a lot of money. <laughs> anyway, so you see the picture. Now, so this is the first part. The second part, because of this structure, I'm going to, uh, let, me, let me pause a little bit. So these are primarily summarizing your questions and your comments in the first session. And then the, uh, on the stuff that, that, that you tend to uh, concern about whether it is moral or immoral, and we have brought up the matter of scale, the matter of dynamics, 
the matter of process instead of just an object lying there, a, 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 a knife, a handkerchief that you use. Okay, it's a system, the repeated use of writing, repeated use of TV that will shape you, your consciousness, into a different mode. Okay, okay. So hopefully, you know, that you will come to more understanding. Any questions for the first part? Any questions? Sorry, this is not a uh, uh, new thing, it's supposed to be summary of the past and a little deepening. But any questions? You're welcome. Any Anybody who has first time coming, uh, second, second session two. Okay, good. So we have, we have uh, quite a few. Okay, very good. Welcome. Very good. Any questions? Any comments? Mike, you want to do anything to add? No? What is this one? Okay. So we move on to the second part. I propose a deep structure approach of redeeming technology. Now this is very bold, okay? Forgive me for being primitive. Uh, <laughs> All right, so second uh, uh, PowerPoint, please. Thank you, Brian. Okay, redeeming technology. People will ask, how can you redeem technology? How can you redeem culture? You know, redeem people. You know, you don't, you don't, you don't redeem object, right? Uh, technology, object. How can you redeem it, right? Uh, <laughs> you're basically redeeming human, right? <laughs> but anyway, we are the theologian here, right? <laughs> Careful. <laughs> okay, let's go. I suggest a nine-step approach to redeeming culture in general and technology in particular. First, the mainstream people will describe a phenomenon and then they will interpret it. And then, they have a, and then you have to dig through the philosophy behind the interpretation and the description of that phenomenon. For example, an unborn baby or a cell of a mother or a fetus uh, different naming will confer different values. If it's just a cell, then you can kill the cell. You can uh, attempt abortion. Fetus, when, when a human become a human, on how many weeks, you know? <laughs> 22. <laughs> how about 22? How about 20? How about doing the splitting of the cell? Yes, everything genetically there. Right? Genetically coding is already there. Okay? So the way you frame it, then you have values conquered, all right? And then you have a philosophy behind it because human is different from cell because you will kill a human. I'm just giving an illustration, right? And, and then you have to challenge the limit of that philosophy, provide an alternative philosophy as a Christian, alternative description, interpretation. In other words, you reframe the question. You reframe the phenomenon. You reframe it on a different mode, okay? And then you have new directions for values, for methods, for action. New directions. That's what I suggest as a redeeming process. Forgive me for being technological. <laughs> okay? Is it clear? So we'll apply to technology in general. Like I said, today the world is looking for efficiency. In the past, we have three human values, prime most human values. The good, the beautiful, and the truthful. Zhang Xin Mei. What is good, what is beautiful, what is truthful. Truth, beauty, and goodness, right? And then the fourth guy came along, the fourth wise man came along, <laughs> not only three. Uh, it's functional, practical, uh, what works, right? And then the fourth guy eat up the first three guys. So what is true? Facts and information, experiment, empirical, verifiable, that is truth. Uh, Descartes. Uh, what is good? What is functional? What works is good. What is beautiful? What works efficiently, effectively? That is beautiful. <laughs> then you lost all the human, uh, the good and the and the beautiful and the truth, and then your efficiency, effectiveness, functional, applied. When you look at the, uh, the churches in the world, right? You look at the, the, the business people in the world, whatever works. At one time, there was a joke. 
in one of the uh, MBA uh, business high CEO seminars, and again, the, the, the mentor says, uh, uh, can you learn how to waste time? Uh, wow, the president, the CEO said, wait a minute, all oh, our life has been taught about to efficiently use time. Okay, so he would suggest, how can you waste time effectively? Oh, that's good, that's good, we'll take that. <laughs> <laughs> wasting time <laughs> actually pondering you know incubating walking around is part of the imagination process anyway so I just give you the extremity that we are in effectiveness because the interpret efficiency as effectiveness and there is a philosophy of machine culture that is machine all right and then the problem with this is the marginalized humanity and then you turn around, you have the alternative philosophy, human dignity as the image of God. In other words, we define human as primary, as the image of God. Machine is just uh, a thing that helps, it's not dominant, it's not primary. So we co-create of human with God through tools, we co-create with God. And community building is important, human habitat in, in harmony with God's created nature. God's nature, nature, go to nature, bring all the urban kids to nature, go to the sea, go to the mountain, go to the, uh, count the trees and, and all that is important. That was a joke in the Chinese culture. Three guys looking at the bird on a tree. The American will say, how can the bird can fly aerodynamically? The French will say, oh, so beautiful, you know, the feather. And what would the Chinese say? Cook. <laughs> Cook it. <laughs> Make good, you know, good pigeon, you know, yu gao. <laughs> very functional, you know, we Chinese are very functional. <laughs> anyway, God's creation and appropriate technology, human maximum potential. That we use the book, you yeah, uh, uh, have uh, Schumacher, Small is Beautiful last time. So that is one general application. I'm just showing you an example, okay, in passing. Now, Media technology. Today, people use media as a persuasive tool for advertisement, for propaganda, for political, for whatever reason, as a persuasive tool. Okay? Media as a carrier to message, a message embedded, encoded, decoded, feedback. You know, that's a linear, you know, uh, 1948, you know, Shannon and Weaver, mathematical models of communication, right? machine, culture. They are engineers. And then the assumption is that media is neutral, only content is specific. Uh, they thought that media is neutral, content is specific. But then Marshall McLuhan came along. By the way, we have a number of books out there that you can flip through and relating to philosophy and theology of technology that we are talking. And then don't bring it home, you know, just flip through. <laughs> and one of the books uh, is. Uh, called uh, Marshall McLuhan, um, uh, one of the chapters is called Medium is the Message. The form dictates the content. Uh, the invention of the clock, mechanical clock. Before the clock, people read time on events. When I got married, when a cow died, when we have a fire. So we, people call time as, a, as a, a events. But then when you have the mechanical clock, then we cut up time into unrelated segments. Okay, so you have to wake up, you know, we have an alarm clock. By the way, we don't wake up by the alarm clock. We wake up by God's grace, you know. <laughs> we cut our lives into just the position of unrelated things. That's what I like a TV commercial, you know, break. Five minutes, different things, you know. Uh, you look at Nathan Rowe, all the shots, unrelated. So we, we have this kind of... Uh, 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 then we redefine it. We have the different philosophy. Media from the Bible is mediator. In the book of Hebrews, Christ is the mediator, the connector, the reconciliator of man and God. Connecting. Media is for mediation. Medium. Mediator. And it's a sign of a covenant among agreement of people, commitment, community building, blessings and curse, command and, 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 and obedience. Okay, and a sign. That is what the Bible talks about media. And co-creation with God. God used voice to create light. 
use dust to create men, use rib to create women. Collaboration, so that is what media is for. Co-creation, community building, science and commitment, co co uh, collaboration, mediator, reconciliation, that is what media is for. So when you induce this into modern advertisement and politics and all that, and you have a different picture, you have a different result, you have a much better use of media. Communication, communion, community, anything to do with C, right? <laughs> Provide choices and participation, and people as agents of media, and not simply users and consumers of media. All right. Anyway, that's why I, I like uh, 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 TV games better than movie. You know, movie you just watch, right? TV games you, at least you participate. You thought you are participating. <laughs> Gene splicing. Now John Wyatt may touch on this. He came along at one time on AI. Today, we have the whole human genome mapped. And then we have an easy way in the in in form of CRISP, right? That we can splice genes and add the genes efficiently and cheaply, faster and cheaper. Wow, uh, very tempting. You can publish a paper a day, right? <laughs> uh, rule of the hammer, you know, you have a rule hammer. When you have the telescope, astronomy, the microscope, now you have gene splicing. Wow, you can publish three papers a day. <laughs> I'm, I'm on good time. Uh, I have you know, at least 10 minutes, no problem. <laughs> okay, people say, okay, it can be for good medical use, you know, healing people. Huh? You add it, you, you, you change people. When you have asthma, there's a pattern of genes. How can we remove and change the gene that people will no longer have asthma? Okay? Healing. And then people will go one step, how about we preventing your children to have asthma? As a baby, we change his gene. Huh? <laughs> and then how about you improve his intelligence, his height and his speed? <laughs> and then a commercial break will say, okay, human, human 2.2. <laughs> you buy this, you buy that, you know. In Hong Kong, we have the washing, hand washing soap that really is supposed to be non-aging. <laughs> anyway. Human as an organism to be improved. Uh, Adolf Hitler, uh, eugenic. Uh, okay. Who decides which is defect, which is genius? Like Beethoven, lost in his hearing, uh, composed uh, best music. What's the tune of that music? Is it not tune? Anyway, human and all these things can be mixed. Transgenic, no? Like the uh, uh, Pinocchio, huh? longer nose, huh? with the tail like a, like a mule, huh? Pinocchio, huh? turning around. <laughs> Transgenic, anyway. <laughs> it's a joke. <laughs> Human dignity from the image of God, you have a new interpretation. God's creation through the Do fallen has delicate equilibrium. When you tamper with certain animal, living things, then you may upset the equilibrium. At one time, Mao Zedong told the farmers, you know, to kill all the birds because the birds is plucking the, the plants. Okay, you kill all the birds. Suddenly, when you kill all the birds, what happened? Huh? All the worms <laughs> came along and eat up the crops. <laughs> you upset the balance. You thought you are, you are intelligent. You tamper on, tamper on something, you lost something. Okay? And then Jurassic Park, huh? we have the animal Jurassic Park. How about we have the human Jurassic Park? <laughs> the creation superhuman, editing could be disastrous. And how can we be in harmony with God and God's sovereign design? That's what we mentioned about Walter Brueggemann in the prophetic imagination last time. Sovereignty of God and the dignity of man are the key to the solution of redeeming technology. You thought you were wiser? You know, Frankenstein, you know? There's a limit to human genetic engineering. Is there a limit? Should there be a limit? Who decides what, what is the limit? Okay? And finally, is it finally? Yes, finally. Uh, I used the example of artificial intelligence. Machine wins over human. Uh, what's the name of that computer in chess? 
Over. Over. Huh? Over. 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 Go. Over. Go. Anyway, so machine wins over human, right? In chess. So machine is more intelligent than human, right? And then the assumption is what? Human mind is computation. Uh, human mind is computation. But the limit of this assumption is that human mind is, is more than computation. It's imagination, artistic, interpersonal, unpredictability, uh, self-will, and all the other things. That's why we have trouble with historians who mention the human history as the Stone Age, the Iron Age, the Bronze Age, as if the tools and technology define humanity. No. In this cave, man, we have pictures, we have paintings, we have rituals, we have fantasy, we have stories, mythology, and everything. You cannot define human just using tool making as the sole definition. Because we are holistic. Okay? Humans made in the image of God. We have totality. A machine is just a simulation of parts of humanity. And we cannot generalize it as if machine is much better. Yes, look at the horse. It runs faster than you. The eagles, you know. Uh, but we are supposed to be image of God. So human culture is holistic. Human use of machine to augment and not to replace. And human needs, needs not to be improved but supplemented with tools. Yes, human need to be redeemed but not through technology. <laughs> and the other way around. Anyway, so just my two cents. Uh, 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 and uh, uh, just bold enough and not uh, uh, detailed enough. This is my initial thoughts. How to have a nine step approach uh, to see the phenomenon, to the general mainstream interpretation, and then we have to see the philosophy behind it, and then the problem with that philosophy. And then we engage in the philosophical end, redefine it, and then we have different application and framing of the situation, and then different directions, and methods, and action. That's what is possible. Okay. This is not agreed. We have not a committee meeting talk on this, but just my two cents. All right? Any questions? And you may want to try it. Go home and try it on different technology. <laughs>